Hey everyone, it's been another insane week in AI with Google capturing the headlines this time around. They've made a ton of massive announcements at their Google I.O. conference, all sorts of advancements in multimodal capabilities, as well as the integration of Google's models with their core products like Google Workspace and so on. But for me, the most exciting, impactful thing about the newest updates from Google are Google Gemini Pro 1.5 and Gemini Flash, and particularly the emphasis on long inputs in LLMs or context length. They also have this really interesting new product called context caching. And there's a lot of interesting things that are developing as we're really starting to see large language models be able to take in massive inputs. So, you know, 2 million input tokens in Gemini Pro 1.5 and 1 million for the lighter weight, faster, cheaper Gemini Flash model. So this video is going to dive into a notebook I've made uh, using DSPy, Gemini, and Weaviate to explore this long context model, explore a new paper from Google called Many Shot in Context Learning. And then we also have a paper from Stanford called Many Shot in Context Learning for Multimodal Foundation Models. So we're seeing this idea of in context learning with a ton of examples because that's what we can do now that we have these long input models. I think this could cause another paradigm shift in how we program artificial intelligence, so to say. So let's dive in. This is going to be such a fun video. All right, let's dive into it. I'm super excited to show you three different tests I've put together to assess how well Gemini Pro 1.5 and Gemini Flash are using their long context. So the first test is the classic needle in the haystack, referring to finding the needle or some specific information in the haystack or a very long input. In this case, we're gonna be hitting the search engine, getting 50 search results back. I mean, we could even stress test this further and say have 100 or 500, I mean, 2 million input tokens. So you, you get the search results and then we're gonna find a particular thing, just as a quick vibe check sanity test to see if it really is able to, you know, attend over this massive input window. The second thing I'm really excited to discuss and show you a demo of is Gemini Pro 1.5 and Gemini Flash, these long context LMs for re-ranking in search. So search technology typically works in two stages. The first stage is retrieval. We're using say BM25 or vector search with indexed vector embeddings. And you're trying to find relevant candidates out of an absolutely gigantic collection. So you might have all of the internet that's indexed. And so you're trying to find, you know, like a hundred results or so out of, you know, billions of results. And then you have this second stage, which is the ranking or re-ranking because, you know, the, the, the retrieval method has already assigned scores and ranked them. So that's why you call it re-ranking. But so re-ranking has had this limitation where, uh, you know, it doesn't scale with the number of inputs. It's slow and there's this cost trade-off there because you, you generally have two approaches. You have the BERT-based cross encoders where you output a score for each for the query and each of the candidate documents. And, that, and that's done totally separately of each other. And then you can like parallelize the inferences. And so that's really appealing. But you don't have that context of looking at all of the candidate documents. And that's a really interesting thing about this kind of list wise re-rankers and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to look at, you know, how using long context LLMs for re-ranking. And then finally, the third thing is easily the most exciting thing. This could be a complete paradigm shift in AI, many shot in context learning. So really quickly is the background on this. The way that I see the story is machine learning first started working when we would collect examples of a task and then we would use supervised learning gradient descent to tune the models with, with the examples that we had. Then GPT-3 came out and showed that you can actually first do self-supervised language modeling and then put a few examples in the input and the model can learn the task from the few examples in the input. Then what happened is ChatGPT came along and showed that by doing reinforcement learning from human feedback, you no longer need the examples. It can just follow the instructions. And now I think we're seeing the fourth paradigm in this where because these models have such long inputs, you can give them a massive amount of examples and that further pushes the performance. And we have a new paper from Google called Many Shot in Context Learning. And then we have a paper from Stanford called Many Shot in Context Learning with Multimodal Foundation Models that shows the generality of this, showing that it also applies to multimodal models. And so I think that's just a super exciting trend. So let's dive into it. All right, so first thing with the setup, we're gonna be using DSPy's Google integration, which is using the Google Generative AI API. This is one of the big things to know about using Gemini and Google APIs, is that they have the Gemini API with Google AI Studio, and then they also have Vertex AI. So that's definitely something to be paying attention to, whether these two products will you know, consolidate and say it's always out of Vertex, or 
always out of you know Gemini API or Google AI Studio, what the kind of naming settles on as well. So that's something I would recommend paying attention to. So really quickly, if you want to see you know which models, I found this code snippet to be pretty helpful. And then you would just pass the model path in here, and then you can access it with DSPy. We're also going to be using Cohere's command R for the sake of the many shot in context learning demo. We'll look at that later. Okay, so this is something that I like doing to just, you know, to loop through the LMs in my DSPy, you know, notebooks when I'm playing with them to see the responses from the different models. So we're going to ask each Gemini Flash, Gemini Pro 1.5 and Command R, how can you make approximate nearest neighbor search, search faster and cheaper? So we just loop through them, get the examples, and I'll spare you reading this to you. But okay, so that's basically how we make sure the setup. All right, now let's dive into our first test, testing the 2 million token window with this, you know, this is kind of what I think everyone is doing now to say, you know, you make some claim, like here's something that I think you should be aware of is we're probably gonna see a lot of people who are, you know, taking these open source models like Llama 3 and then extending the context window with things like yarn scaling and so on. And then you'll see a claim like, you know, here's a new open source model that has a 1 million input window and so on. So here's a little test to be aware of to just, you know, when you take these models and just see if it really can attend over the input window. So the way we're going to be testing this is we, uh, I have a Weaviate index that has index chunks from Weaviate's blog posts, and we're going to be getting 50 search results, and then we're going to find some particular information in the 50 search results. So we're, we're, the search results is purely for the sake of getting the long context. We ask this question, how does quantization help with vector databases? and we get these top 50 results. So so first of all, just, you know, I think it's just fascinating to take a look at these long inputs and just sort of appreciate the fact that you can give all of this to a large language model and have it read through it. But so we're gonna be asking it to find, this is gonna be the needle, is what was the date, when was this particular uh, blog post published? And that's what we're gonna see if it can recall. And it has out of all these 50 search results, can it go find that particular information in the input? So we asked the question, we first define our needle in the haystack uh, program signature with DSPy, given a long context in a question, find the answer in the context, and we use chain of thought to reason before we answer. So it's reasoning, let's think step by step in order to find the date and blog posts about Vimana and HSW. We can look for the title and then find the date associated with it, and it correctly answers October 11th, 2022. The next test I'm super excited to present is using these long input LLMs for re-ranking. So as a quick background, search is typically done in two stages where we retrieve and then we re-rank. So when we're retrieving, we're measuring, in either case with search, we're measuring recall. How many of the relevant results did we return out of the K, the number that we're searching for? So when you have recall at 10, you need to be super accurate. Whereas recall at 100, you relax it a little bit. And this, this is especially important with retrieval because with retrieval and especially with vector databases, we have these trade-offs and say how we construct the HNSW graph or how we quantize the vectors with things like scalar quantization. And so basically if we are able to relax the recall from recall at 10 to recall at 50 or 100 or you know maybe even more than that, then we can compress the vectors heavily and reduce the cost that you need to store this index. And so that's something I'm really excited about. So then the next thing I'd say about re-ranking models is that I don't think re-ranking is the right way of thinking about this anymore. It might be better to think about this as filtering search results. So re-ranking is what the literature calls this, and that describes you know reordering all of the results from the retrieval. But I think what you want with RAG, and I would say search in general, is to filter it out. You, you don't want the, irre the irrelevant results anymore, but you know I'll leave that. I'll see what people think of that. But anyway, so, so here's the DSPy signature context relevance counter. Given a numbered list of responses from a search engine to a query, count how many of them are relevant to the query. So in this case is just gonna output the int, but really what you'd wanna do is have the list of ints where you can then parse the results if you're really building a whole RAG system out of this. So it's looking at our query, how does quantization help with vector databases? And remember, it's taking this entire thing as input, all 50 of these search results, and then it's reasoning, it's saying articles 1, 4, 10, 16, 19, 23, and 38, all discuss quantization in this context. You have seven relevant results. So I think this is a super powerful thing for building these search systems, and I can't wait to see what people think and build with this. All right, I'm super excited about the last part of this notebook, RAG with many shot in context learning. So uh, really quickly, I know I've maybe said this too many times already, but a little bit of background. Most people working with machine learning, who've been doing machine learning models for a while, have probably spent a good amount of time labeling examples in their data set because examples have been the dominant way to achieve machine learning. You would you know, label this as a cat, this is a dog, or whatever you're doing, and then that's how you would train a model to do the task. 
So GPT-3 then came along and showed that you could put a few examples in the input. And then we kind of had, so then, so then examples were kind of put in the, you know, back shelf because ChatGPT showed that with reinforcement learning from human feedback, all we need are the instructions. So you can just say, proofread this essay or come up a a, with a list of 10 paraphrasings of this paragraph or whatever. And because it was so good at instruction following, people kind of, I think, forgot about examples generally. But now that we have these long input models and we have synthetic data generation frameworks like DSPy, I think we're going to see a return of many shot, you know, with this kind of examples, particularly in this many shot in context learning. And so this will depend probably entirely on how much better the performance is by doing it this way. So this new paper from Google called many shot in context learning is showing the differences on these different tasks between few shots, say five shot, one shot, 16 shot, compared to, you know, tons of examples like, you know, 125, 512, and so on. And so there's an, the, another really interesting aspect of this are whether the tasks themselves are long input. So you see the difference between five shot and 500 shot with summarization. So say you have the task of, you know, here's my application to Harvard, could you review it for me? And your application to Harvard, let's say it's like eight pages or so on. And so you have some of these tasks where the inputs are very long and thus the examples are also like how many of them you can have are limited as well as by the length of the task. Whereas say you have like short math questions or short uh, snippets of text to translate from say English to French and so on, you, you can maybe get more examples that way. So I think input length inherent in the task is another very interesting thing with the design of how many uh, you know case shot you have with in context learning. So, so this is a new paper exploring this kind of idea and presenting some results of how much this can improve performance. So I think definitely something to be you know interested in with your application. So now let's dive into how to achieve this with DSPy. So first of all, we have a RAG program. So we have the signature for ra for answering the question, assess the context and answer the question. We have our input fields, the context that we retrieve from our database and then the question, and then we output the answer. Okay, so here's the first thing I think is really interesting with generating these synthetic examples. So for me working at Weaviate and dealing with, a <laughs> seeing a lot of people who are building these kind of chatbots, a lot of people have already thought about, you know, question and answer data sets. It's not uncommon to see someone have like a question and answer data set already, but what they don't have are rationales about why particularly this is the answer. So with chain of thought, you add an intermediate output of reasoning. So you add that reasoning about here's why this is the answer to the question. And so that's one thing that the DSPy framework can do for you is generate these chain of thoughts. Now, if you're gonna have a multi-layer program as well, say the RAG program is gonna write new search queries and, or say it's gonna do that filtering thing or summarize the search results before answering or you know whatever it does, you don't have labels for the intermediate steps of multi-layer language programs. And so that's another thing that uh, DSPy's Bootstrap FewShot and the Synthetic Data Framework can help you achieve. So in this example, we've defined our RAG program. I'm loading in a data set I have. I have these questions derived from the WeVA blog post and I have 50 of them. So now here's the, the, an interesting thing why we brought in Cohere's command R model. And I think a really interesting thing to kind of explore the nuances of models and you know companies offering models to us. So Cohere's command R model series, they're specialized for retrieval augmented generation. And so for this particular task and also you're, so you're looking at kind of performance as well as cost speed, and then maybe also the reliability of the APIs and generally having this kind of optionality, so in this case, I'm using the command R model to generate the synthetic examples that I would then say, you know, use with this massive many shot prompt to then give to Gemini Flash or Gemini 1.5 Pro. So we plug this into our DSPy Bootstrap few shot. We pass in the command R model. We tell it that we want 50 demos of the task. So then it goes through our data set, generating these 50 examples of RAG. And then we have our many shot compiled RAG. So now we ask the question, how will long context LLMs impact re-ranker models? We again, get our result from Gemini Flash and Gemini Pro. And it's also worth noting that uh, the Cohere models, they also have pretty long inputs. They have 128,000. So I'm still not at testing 1 million, 2 million. These are like really enormous numbers of tokens. So let's take a look at, at what this means. How, how massive a you know 50 shot RAG input, what do these inputs look like, right? So we're going to be inspecting the history where we first have the instructions. So with ChatGPT, you would you would just give it, you know, this would be all you'd have. And then, of course, you would retrieve the context. So 
maybe more like um, you know this first example. You you would give it this much. This would be how much you know ChatGPT or an instruction following model would see with its um, with its input. But and then with few shot learning, you'd say you know you'd have this is example number one. This is going to be example number two. This is going to be example number three, right? And so few meaning you know like three to four. But now with many shot learning, we have you know fifty of these examples. So our prompt ends up being, you know, absolutely insane where we have 50 of these examples of question, context, reasoning, answers, and all of this goes as input to one, to one model. And then, um, so let me see what the question was that I asked. All right. Impact re-ranker models. Okay. So after all of this input, then we finally give it the question and then it's able to do the reasoning. So, so it takes in this question, how long context LMs impact re-ranker models, and then it searches and gets uh, gets these search results for this particular question. So, so this is the cutoff of that last 50th question before it's now serving the new inference. So I think this is absolutely crazy. It's, you know, it's saying to be looking through this and really appreciating this, that what long context models mean. And I think this many shot in context learning thing could be an entirely new way of thinking about how we build these systems.